Hey guys, the Cinnamon123 here with another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make this mob trap. Uh, why you might want to make this mob trap? Well, if you look inside, it's pretty dark, but it's also nothing but spawning space. So, what we do to activate it is whenever we flick the switch, water spills out and it'll knock all the mobs everywhere. So if you give me a second to load it up with some creepers, zombies, and spiders, because that covers all your major uh, food groups, <laughs> or your uh, for your mob traps. Here we go. Let's see if I can get out of here. All right. And there's one poor little spider suffocating to death. But if we activate the mob trap. The water will come rushing, and all the mobs come crush falling out, even the spiders. Uh, very rarely will uh, something survive, but uh, the chances of that happening are very low. And uh, occasionally spiders will gum up the system, but you don't have to worry about that too much. Alright, so let's get right into the tutorial. Alright, so to start making this uh, mob trap, what you need to do is you need to gather some building blocks. And you have to pillar up quite a ways up in the air. So I recommend doing a sand pillar if you uh, have to. And pillar up to about the height that you want. And then go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and break my pillar, but if you're in survival mode, you'll probably want to keep it there so you can get back down easily enough. Alright, now the thing that you want to do now is you want to decide how long you want to make your mob trap. I'm going to make this one 5 wide, like the one over there, but you could make it up to 15 wide, or longer if you add repeaters. So actually I think I'll, I'll do it a little bit longer. So, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, let's make it 10. Now what you want to do is on each of these you want to go uh, you want to start from the center you want to go one two three four five six seven you want to do that on either side so one two or no one two three four five six seven I don't know if you want to make this out another brick it's not the prettiest thing now that I'm looking at it you want to do that for the entire center row so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that right quick. But so the next thing you want to do is you want to find the center. So the easy way to do that is to plop down a water. And if it spills over the edges, you're not on the center. But if it doesn't, then you're good. So the thing you want to do next is you want to build up one block. Build up two blocks, actually. Start building a ceiling on either side of your trap. And then on the other side, you'll want to take regular old pistons, not sticky pistons or anything. And you'll want to place them like this. Oop. All the way across your spawning pads. Then you want to get up to the top of your trap. And you'll want to place blocks on top of both your piston and your normal building block walls. What this will do is it'll help keep the water in before it spills out just to make sure that um, it also makes it to where the uh, nothing will spawn that you don't want to aka endermen because uh, they'll ruin this trap and if they touch water they'll teleport somewhere and they won't be uh, friendly towards you. Right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to grab some redstone and string it all the way across your piston side. See pistons there, and you place if you place some sort of uh, means of powering it down, you'll see that it all fills up with the pistons. Oops, sorry there. <laughs> right, then you'll take some water. Actually, here uh, you need to block off this end first. So I'll just go ahead and do that right quick. Alright, so now you want to take some water and you want to fill in all the spots above the pistons 
with water. Uh, it doesn't actually have to be source blocks all the way across. It can be flowing water, but um, I think it looks a little bit looks a little better if you have it uh, completely covered with water. As you can see, the water over there is hidden. It's a slightly different design than this actually, but this is a little bit more efficient because it stops Enderman spawning. So here, if you notice, we'll open up the bridges. The uh, mobs would start flowing out, and like here, you can see if you hold space pretty much you'll see how mobs react in water and they would fl fly right off no problems, no strings attached. And then you flick the switch again, all the water dissipates, and we're ready to start spawning mobs again. Alright, so now you want to go ahead and build up a wall around your device. It's hard to see with this nether brick a little bit. But you want to make sure it's fully enclosed and that way it can uh, be very dark inside so that we can get all kinds of mobs spawning. There will actually be no light let in from this besides un unless you want to cover up this water. There, If you cover up the water there will be no light let in. If you don't there will. Uh, but just a little bit. It'll be pretty dark. But 100% efficient, cover up the water. Anyway, long story short, uh, you need to cover this up. And I'll go ahead and cut to where I have that done. Alright, so I got that all covered up. Uh, the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to place two more blocks out. This way spiders can get through your trap without gumming it up and you'll want to place two blocks all the way around the rim. This block here isn't actually needed uh, all the way down, but just two blocks out and then you want to place one block all the way across and what this will do is that it'll let your mob trap operate during the daytime as well as make sure that everything is nice and enclosed so as you can see it's pretty dark even with my uh, Optify and I'm getting some pretty uh, dark stuff with my special render distance settings. But um, all that's saying is that I'm in a dark enough area that mobs would spawn in, I think is the purpose of this feature of Optify. Not really sure though. Anyway, as you can see, it is pretty dark in here. Um, as you could also tell visually. And you want to do that on both sides of your mob trap. Alright, so I've got the both sides of the caps done. And so what you'll want to do next is you want to make sure that no pistons can be seen from the outside of your trap because if that is the case, they are fully transparent blocks and they'll let all light in. The water is a little bit different. It'll drop the light level two levels and then the rest of the time it'll decay like normal light. So if we go ahead and hop in here, oh dear, uh, let's get up in there. If we go ahead and hop up in here, we'll see that it's a little bit lighter in the center, but if we cover up the water, like like that, and we go back down in here, the center's the darkest place. And as you can see, it's the same darkness as absolute darkness as indicated by my Optifine fog thing. Alright, so if we were to just leave the area for a little bit, it would start spawning mobs. So uh, I think I'm going to let it sit here and do that for a little bit. Okay, so I let it sit for a little bit here, and uh, we've got a few mobs that have spawned in here. Um, of course you can make this much more efficient by doing what I did over here by extending down these drop zones it'll make it even darker in there. But anyway now all we need to do is we, we flick the lever and the mobs start coming this way and they fall down to their death. Alright so a pretty obvious flaw with the design was that it's not fully automatic. At least it wasn't until just a second ago whenever I added this contraption here. So what happens is that um, 
every five minutes whenever a block or an item is just thrown onto the ground uh, in five minutes it'll just disappear so what this does is this utilizes that then uh, there's a rotten flesh down there as is in the dispenser so whenever the rotten flesh were to disappear it'd go through a big long delay and of course you'd want the delay much longer than this to make sure all the mobs get out but it would uh, shoot out another rotten flesh and reset the line so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and pick it up and show you guys that in action if I can hurry so here's all the water and then you heard the dispenser click and all the water goes away and uh, if you left it running for a little bit longer than what I have set up here it would automatically reset itself every five minutes the only thing is that you have to keep loading some junk item in there. Rotten flesh is good because it's not a good food source but it also um, you'll get lots of it from this farm. Alright guys I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, if you want to take a second to write and comment on this video I'd really really appreciate it. As you can see I've been working on several other projects so if you want to check out my channel to see what some of those other tutorials just might be about. I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, I also have been working on a Let's Play series, so if you'll check that out, I would also appreciate it. I'm just starting out, so I really need the feedback on that. Also, if you'd like to subscribe for more videos like this one, I would really, really appreciate it. Alright, this is the Cineman123, signing out.